Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Capital City Sports Network, where this afternoon from the Ford Ice Center here in Bellevue, Tennessee, the American Collegiate Hockey Association and the Southeastern Collegiate Hockey Conference present the South Carolina Gamecocks and the University of Tennessee Volunteers. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Dylan Clark with Zach McKinstry. The Gamecocks falling last night, a 6-5 double overtime loss to the Tigers of Auburn. And this tournament shaping up quite differently from the way many people had expected. Yeah, teams came out to play. Auburn com playing completely differently than we saw them last week. A really good job by the Tigers to come out in a hard-fought game by both teams. Uh, Mike Bolger playing an incredible game for South Carolina. And Hayden Harris, the goalie for Auburn, playing incredible as well, ending in a 6-5 double overtime loss. Auburn advances, and they will play Ole Miss, who had an upset last night against the number three seed FAU. That'll be later tonight. We won't be here for that, as this is the consolation game for the Gamecocks. But it still means something, as right now, they have the number two seed in the ACHA South region, which means they could potentially skip regionals and go straight to nationals, but they're going to need some other teams to start losing, and they certainly need to win this one, Dylan. USF and the University of South Florida sitting at number three in the ACHA South. They play Embry-Riddle tonight, and if Embry-Riddle can pull that off against USF, that would certainly help the Gamecocks quite a bit in retaining that number two spot in the ACHA South. And uh, the other games that went on last night, University of Georgia took down Georgia Tech, that four versus five matchup by a score of four to one. As Zach said, as Zach said, Ole Miss took down FAU. It was a five to three score. And Arkansas put a beating on Tennessee as we were rolling up to the arena. 15 to two, the final score. So these are two very frustrated, very angry teams. Tennessee was physically battered the Gamecocks mentally battered so this game with still huge implications on the line these are two angry teams and I have a feeling they're going to spend the next 60 minutes taking out their frustrations on each other yeah James Maple and net for the volunteers last night making 44 saves and usually when you say a goalie has 44 saves you think you'd have a good night let up 15 goals uh, number one seed Arkansas just onslaught of shots 59 total, and the Tennessee Volunteers lost by 13. Tough, tough way to go out in this tournament. Now the consolation game against the Gamecocks. But as you said, Dylan, both of these teams were going to play angry. South Carolina with still a lot riding on this game, and Tennessee playing in front of a lot of home fans that came out to watch them win a game. Two teams that are quite familiar with each other. They split the season series all the way back in October. The Gamecocks rolled into Knoxville. For an 11 p.m. start time, they had some troubles with the bus, got there 10 minutes before warm-ups, guys were cold, whatever you want to say. 6-2, the Gamecocks fell to the Volunteers. An outstanding game played by Brendan Shaw, the goaltender of record in that game. We believe Shaw will start for Tennessee tonight. And then that Sunday morning, back in October, the Gamecocks came back again. Upset, angry, 11-1, they battled back and put the Volunteers down. So, with both teams having similar rage levels right now. We'll see how this one shapes up. As we said, we expect Brendan Shaw to start for Tennessee. Liam Gormley between the pipes tonight for South Carolina. 8-0-1 this season. A 9-0-1 save percentage. 2.54 goals against average. One shutout. And Trip Russell last night, the goaltender of record, made 39 saves. One of uh, his more outstanding performances, though, in that 6-5 double overtime loss. As the players finish warm-ups, we'll send you to a break. We'll have the National Anthem starting lineups announced. And when we come back, puck drop here. South Carolina and the University of Tennessee on the Capital City Sports Network, all presented by SGTV.
Welcome back to the Capital City Sports Network. The starting lineups have been announced. The national anthem has been sung by all in attendance. I guess they're having some problems with the PA system, so somebody pulled the anthem up on YouTube and fed it through the, uh, the PA announcer's microphone. The song cut out at one point. The crowd joined in, and such is life in the ACHA. So Gamecocks here against Tennessee, two teams very familiar with each other. As we said, Liam Gormley in goal tonight for South Carolina. Well, this morning, I should say, for South Carolina. And Alan Searwell will start out with Mike Bolger, Julian Reese, and Luke Rudman across the front. Colin Burke and Hunter Jackal on defense. Josh Main and Blake Sledge on D for the Volunteers. King, Galpin, and Bunch across the red line for this opening faceoff. And in goal, Brendan Shaw, who got the win against South Carolina in the first of that back-to-back -back matchup all the way back in October. Two teams... With immense amount of frustration, playing for pride in South Carolina, playing for much more than that. They're playing for the right to go right to nationals rather than having to battle it out in regionals. Reese against Galpin, and we're underway here in Nashville. So glad you could be with us. South Carolina and Tennessee were underway. The Gamecocks chip it back in behind the net of Brendan Shaw. Having trouble, turn back over, and Colin Burke pushes this one back in. On it, Michael Bolger. Some lineup changes for South Carolina. Bolger remains in. Three goals and an assist last night, including the game-tying goal later on in that third period that made overtime possible. Julian Reese, a backhander in the slot. Now Gator in front. Rudman's backhand shot denied by Shaw. Now the Volunteers chip this one back out. Roaring after it is Galpin. It rolls in on Gormley. He comes out and plays that one. Little close call there. Gormley staring down one of the Volunteers early on here. The scratches tonight for South Carolina, Ryan McGowan, Duncan Hickman, Evan Hoey, and Rob Lawrence come out. Alex Siegfried, Hunter Jackal, Parker West coming back in. And now line changes for the Gamecocks here. One minute in, trading opportunities. An open ice hit there by Nick Peters. And Zach, talk about the play of Nick Peters in overtime last night for South Carolina. John Kokenberg was going to him all the time. Yeah, he was really impressive. His speed... Making, making plays on the offensive end. Good job by Peters. Quick shot up high there. Shaw is able to fight that one off. A right-handed catching goaltender. The only one we've seen this season. A centering pass there. Too far past the stick of Owen Thomas. The rebound comes there for Tyler Oakley. And now into the corner of their battle for it. Galpin there against Owen Thomas. And now a point shot knocked down on its way. Loose in front. Mecca battles for it there. Ronan Egan can't get a shot. The puck comes in the near side corner. Riding the circle, Ronan Egan into the slot, sends it back down low, creeping in as Peters fires one high there off the glove of the goaltender. And that one ricochets out of play. We'll have a stoppage and face off here. 18-18 to go in a scoreless first period. Three shots on goal for South Carolina. And that allows Max Galpin, number 64 of the Volunteers, to get off the ice. He took a puck on a block to the skate there, skated off slowly. He had two goals in Tennessee's win against South Carolina earlier on this season. And no surprise, the starting line for South Carolina of Bolger, Reese, and Rudman, they played, all played phenomenal yesterday. Bolger picking up a hat trick and an assist, and Reese picking up some points as well. So expect some fireworks out of them tonight. Julian Reese now just two goals shy of Eric Patterson's single season club record as a shot shut down there by Shaw. Patterson scored 22 back in the 13-14 campaign. And no one has really been able to come close since. The first 20 goal scorer for Julian Reese, first 20 goal scorer in Julian Reese, for South Carolina in quite some time. As this puck trickles far side corner, Ian Powderly plays it high off the boards. Parker West back in the lineup. Tries to play it back down low for Noah Maddy. It's shut back down. West keeps it in at the blue line, though one-handed free. And now back to the come the Volunteers. They'll chip it in near side corner. Getting in after it, going for a line change here, but first on it is Avery Pruden. He reverses for Parker West, carries it up the far side, and one-hands this one free. Bouncing puck, Chad Lazine now picked up by Noah Maddy. In over the line, it's Maddie. A little toe drag there, top of the circles, bodied off the puck. And back the other way come the Volunteers. It's Galpin moving that one ahead. It drifts back in on Colin Burke. Started out the first period for South Carolina. He moves it on ahead for Alex Siegfried. Burke pulls that one free, across the red line. Moving it in now, Burke. The Gamecocks back with numbers. It's Hawkinson, though turned over. And now Ian Tulk moves it out and pushes this one free for Connor Hamill. Rejected there by Hunter Jackal. Rolls back in for an icing here. Another stoppage, 16.59 to go. First period, still scoreless. Yeah, something South Carolina is going to want to avoid today. Something they didn't do as well yesterday is defensive miscues, some miscommunications in the back end. We saw one earlier. Liam Gormley had to come out of net, poke that puck away. And a lot of odd man rushes in that Auburn game. 
something that South Carolina is going to want to shut down here today. Gamecocks looking to get the legs moving early here. You saw early on on that uh, stare down. It was Pete Bunch and Liam Gormley. Gormley coming out, knocking the puck away. Gamecock defenseman a little slow on that one. Is that the puck reversed now, and it is Bunch down the left side. He's got to step here on Hunter Jackal. Now he faces Colin Burke, takes a big hit there. The puck rolls free, play continues. And rolls up the near side boards. Michael Pika turnover though. Defensive zone. Galpin goes back to work now for Tennessee as Hunter Jackal spins away from him, goes D to D. Colin Burke has an opportunity, flips this one back out towards center. Nicely batted down by Michael Pika. He lost it and he thunderous check there. Peak goes down hard, the puck rolls free. And back the way come the Volunteers. Galpin down the left side, Peak back to his feet. Galpin fires one there, it's knocked away. Pete Bunch rather. Bunch wearing 40 tonight. Galpin wearing 64 and a slow roller. Josh Main gonna pick this one up and away from Luke Rudman. Into the skates of two of the Volunteers. Now it rolls up the wall. Oakley fires that one wide. That'll send Corey Hawkinson after it. Hawkinson knocked off the puck. Playing center once again. A turning shot there. Bolger sent that one wide. Oakley again, that shot goes off the outside of the cage, and Hawkinson's got to go back to the bench for a line change. He gets uh, Julian Reese on the bench now, or on the ice. And Bolger, a couple toe drags. And it's turned over. They roll back the other way with some speed. Bobby Stoberski down the right side, broken up nicely by Julian Reese. Nick Peters takes over. And the sophomore out of Buffalo, New York, played for Niagara Wheatfield High School. Sends it across for Tyler Oakley. Now Luke Rudman. Peters and Oakley, the Two most offensive-minded Gamecock defensemen on the ice together. You see sometimes, as Tennessee's got a touch up here, Reese moves back the other way. Sometimes you try to anchor an offensive defenseman to a defensive one, but Alan Sirwan and John Copelandberg are electing to go with the two most offensive guys on the blue line and put them together. Pruden chips this one back in for Mike Bolger. Now to Owen Thomas, who played some defense at the end of the night last night in double overtime. And Nick uh, Parker West, rather, blows a tire. And the odd man rush shut down only for a moment there. Avery Pruden has some trouble with that loose puck. It bobbles free. Bolger just going to chip that one out across the red line. That'll send Ryan Schiebert back to pick this one up. And off the turnover, Avery Pruden fires this one in. Delayed offsides. Pruden's got to touch up. Over five minutes played here in the first period. Three shots on goal for South Carolina. Liam Gormley has yet to be tested by a volunteer shot. Parker West going to slowly roll out from behind his own goal. Waiting patiently, he'll gain the red line and just fire that one in. Now we'll send Cam Mecca in after it. He scored a goal last night, his 15th of the season. His point total, 15 goals, 9 assists for 24 points. Exactly how he finished last season. Still a couple of games left to play here. There's the bouncing puck in the slot, picked up by Ronan Egan. One hands it. Mecca's shot goes high there. May have been tagged by the shoulder of Brendan Shaw. It rolls up and out of play, and we'll have another stoppage here. 13.40. The clock is still rolling. The clock is still rolling. 13.40. Kent, all right. My apologies. I'm sorry. I just, this, they finally got it. We've had so much trouble with the scoreboard in the last little while. Now they've reset the game clock. 13.52. My apologies. Got a little ahead of myself there. Got a little excited. Julian Reese has played some good defense so far in this one. Had a nice back check to prevent an offensive opportunity, and then picking a Tennessee volunteer pocket to get the puck into the offensive zone. Good job by him so far. Gamecocks go back to work. Mecca one hands that one. It pops back the other way. Hunter Jackal now wristing one high. There it goes off the glove of the goaltender. And now moved back out. Hunter Jackal made his Gamecock debut in that second game against the University of Tennessee. Scored a goal for which he was not credited. So officially, he's got zero goals. But as from my vantage point, I could clearly see that puck go top corner. The goaltender never saw it, so... We'll give Hunter Jackal uh, his goal, and we'll give him the credit he deserves as Ronan Egan rolls back on now. Right up the gut, Egan alone, feeds one in front, and it goes in, they score! Ian Powderly, Tennessee players hollering that that puck was kicked in. The Gamecocks have their first one of the game, though. The official says the goal stands, 13-16 to go in the first period. Powderly cashes in first for South Carolina. Yeah, and a changeup thrown in on Shaw. That puck might have deflected off the skate, but it won't be ruled that it was kicked in. I think Shaw was expecting, well, trying to cut off that pass first. Couldn't do it. Good pass across the slot. And then when you send passes that clean, eventually someone's going to tap it in. And off a skater, whatever it was off, it ends up in the back of the net. And South Carolina out to an early lead. Five shots on goal so far. 
to none from the Tennessee Volunteers. View a little obstructed. You got players in front. There's a support pole right in front of us right here in the broadcast area. We're making do with what we can. Couldn't entirely see if uh, hit the stick of Ian Powderly, hit perhaps his skate. As the officials will converse some more with those in the penalty box. The goal remains on the board. And there will be some conversation here. Johnny Scatello, the head coach of Tennessee, formerly out of the University of Tampa. He is asking for an explanation. Alan Sirwa and John Koklenberg waiting patiently on the Gamecock bench. Not the first stoppage we had, if you remember yesterday. A lot of stoppages, something the players talked about after the game, was the delays that they had to go through and how it affected them mentally and gave them some rest physically. So we'll see if the same thing happens here today. The Gamecocks out to an early 1-0 lead. And there were a lot of conversations on that bus ride home and the bus ride back to the hotel, rather. We've got an icing here. That'll knock a couple of seconds off the clock. A lot of conversations about the overtime format. They played a four, uh, excuse me, a five-minute four-on-four overtime. And then no one scored, so they went to double overtime, which was set at 20 minutes. And there was confusion as to whether or not they were going to switch sides. And the overtime format was not laid out uh, as cleanly as many players and fans and coaches would have liked. And the result as shot there off the draw. That one goes wide, low to the blocker side of Gormley. This puck kicked right in front of the Gamecock bench. Coming back now for Nick Peters. Patiently waiting. Fires a saucer pass in behind Chad Lazine. He's got to reach back and avoids a hit, though a two-on-one. Powderly with Maddie. Powderly fires one there. Shaw makes the save again with that blocker. Maddie sends one in front. Lazine, another save by Shaw. Knocked down. Still the puck is loose, trying to drag it free. Maddie takes one there. He puts it over the net. Peters chops at that one. He gets it and moves it back towards the point. And Noah Maddie, center point, sends one there. High and wide off the glass. Oakley down low again. The Gamecocks trying to turn up the intensity here. Put some more pressure on and perhaps double their lead. It's Chad Lazine again in front. He's still got Ian Powderly. Lone goal scorer so far for South Carolina. Now it's rolled back in. Turnover. Powderly in the slot. Sidesteps a man. Loses it. Peters fires one there. That may have hit the goal post. In behind the goaltender. Now it rolls up the wall here, and a centering pass. Ian Powderly, another turning shot. That one goes wide. Nick Peters, far side corner, chips it back down low. The defenseman stepping off the goal line, trying to feed one in front for Chad Lazzini, can't connect. Now it's moved back, and that'll send Tyler Oakley back in. Rolling back towards the point, Nick Peters, far side. Side steps a man, hesitates, and turns it over. Could be an odd man rush for Tennessee, though they're gassed at the end of a long shift, and Gamecock's got a lucky break. Tennessee could have put a three-on-one back the other way. This one chipped back in, and Josh Main takes it. Four-checking is Michael Peake. Main waiting patiently behind his own goal. As we approach the halfway point of this first period. Hamill sends it back in. He's going to get it right back along the near side. Board's turned over. Now it's Avery Pruden, a backhand shot. Not a lot on it. That'll send Corey Hawkinson in after it. Alex Siegfried posted up in front. Hawkinson gets crushed. Nice hit in behind the goal there by Hamill. He joins Josh Main. Tangling there as Siegfried goes down. Hawkinson has the puck. Shoots one. Another save by Shaw. That left blocker hand. It goes high. And Tennessee chips this one out all the way out past Parker West. And he'll have to retreat into the neutral zone. The Gamecocks try to come right back. It goes off the skate of Alex Siegfried into the zone. Turned over. Hawkinson alone in front of backhand shot. He scores. Hawkinson opportunistic here in the first period. 2-0 South Carolina. Great goal by Corey Hawkinson. Four checking, getting control of that puck and then working it in, getting it one-on-one -on -one with Shaw and going backhand right underneath Shaw there to take a 2-0 lead. Earlier on in that shift, Nick Peters had a really good chance off the goal post, a goal post these Gamecocks are all too familiar with as last night in that Auburn game, several goal posts that helped the Tigers and a crossbar that certainly did not help the Gamecocks, but this time... They answer, and it is 2-0 with 11 minutes to play here in this first. Hawkinson, the senior, his ninth goal of the season. He and Powderly chip in and combine. Make it 2-0 South Carolina. Eight shots on goal for the Gamecocks. Tennessee still waiting for their first. Gormley waiting patiently down to our left. Burke fires the puck to our right. Play rolls on. Luke Rudman after it. And this second line for South Carolina. Tries to keep the pressure on. Julian Reese throws a hit. King avoids that one. He swings it out wide. Steps inside on Hunter Jackal. Towards the goal shot. Gormley makes the first save of the game for South Carolina. 
pretty tough first save as Clark goes on across the goal line, red line rather. It's kicked back in off the boot of Luke Rudman. And Clark flips that one high. Glove down by Galpin. Chip back in, Gormley out to play it for South Carolina. Drops that one off for his defenseman and Jackal. Away from the forechecking. It comes back in and cross ice pass on the delayed off sides. They'll blow that one down. Neutralized face off coming forward here. 10-10 to go first period. 2-0 South Carolina. Thanks to Powderly and Hawkinson. Yeah, number 17, Drew King getting the first opportunity for Tennessee so far tonight. Working that puck down the left side and getting a good shot off. He had both the goals last night in that 15-2 loss to Arkansas. And he has been one of the better offensive players for Tennessee this season. Cam Mecca rolling forward off the neutral zone draw. He's got uh, Ronan Egan in the slot. A shot there. He scores. Ronan Egan. That was all hustle by Cam Mecca. Ronan Egan reaps the reward. 3-0 Gamecocks before the halfway point of the first period. And this is starting to be what what has become commonplace with a couple of excep exceptions, last night being one of them, Gamecocks are up 3-0 early in the first. Well, we talked yesterday about how that line of Mecca, Egan, and Thomas has 81 points on the season, just an offensive juggernaut for this South Carolina squad as the Gamecocks start to smell blood in the water. Good connection there between Egan and Mecca. Mecca working that puck down the left side and a great pass to set up Egan, who slots at home. Goal number 12 for the Bluebell PA native Ronan Egan, alternate captain. Here in his second season with the Gamecocks. Now a turnover right in front there. That shot knocked down on its way. Egan comes back and chips it over for Cam Mecca. He's got Owen Thomas streaking up the gut. It's Thomas. He's got a step here, bodied off nicely. Still got a shot there. Shaw makes the save and the puck rolls free. Egan far side back down for Thomas. Takes a hit there. Puck knocked off of him by Blake Sledge. And it rolls all the way out past Nick Peters. Down for an icing. And you see the frustration mounting here for both clubs. Some uh, more hits are being thrown. Some more runs are being taken. And there's a lot of hockey left to be played. And we got to see the speed of Owen Thomas there working down the ice. Tennessee getting a body to him, trying to push him off the puck. But Owen Thomas also showing his strength, working his way in towards net and still managing to get a shot off on net. Good effort by Owen Thomas. Peters off the draw, sends one high and wide. The rebound pops out in front. Powderly, a backhand shot. What a save by Shaw. Rebound open net, they score. Noah Maddy tucks it home, 4-0 South Carolina. An outstanding first save by Shaw. The Gamecocks relentless in front. And the lead is now four. Yeah, Shaw laying out to make that first save on Powderly. Going all the way across the crease, making a big save. And then Maddie showing composure as that puck bounced out to him. Didn't let it roll up on him. Took his time to make sure he got it all on that stick and then got the shot off, put it away. Now 4-0 for South Carolina. Maddie, one of the players, he's a, a junior this year, tried out. His first two years at South Carolina did not make the team. He started the year out as a practice squad player, and he's worked his way up to the main roster. Took a similar route as Hunter Jackal, and he's become the anchoring third-line center for the Gamecocks over the last handful of games. Farming got a nice little job slot for himself. The puck rolls back. Pruden fires one high there. Shaw has some trouble with the rebound. Shaw makes a big save with the left pad. Lazine behind the goal. Bumped off. Inside nine to go, one-time shot by Powderly. The goaltender, Shaw, never saw it. And we've got a stoppage in play. Waiting the signal from the official. Well, we'll get back to you on that one. 8.48 to go. They'll say they're looking at the net. I didn't see any bumps on the net, did you? No, no. But, you know, not the first time that we've seen a delay in this one for some confusing things. Anyway, good shot there for South Carolina. As you said earlier, Shaw never saw that one. Just off net, but more offensive opportunities. South Carolina trying to put their foot on the gas here. Well, nothing will be as bad as here comes Pika shot. Uh, centering pass goes wide. Nothing will be as bad as uh, that one goal. Uh, I believe the left side of the ice in the plex. A strong breeze could knock that net off its moorings. And now back the other way. Bunch makes a nice move there around Avery Pruden. Button hooks and drops the puck back off. Be taken there by Drew King. Had both goals against Arkansas in that 15-2 loss yesterday afternoon. And a rolling puck sent all the way back down. And blown dead there. Icing will be called. Alex Siegfried hard on that one. And we had some discussions about the team moving forward. The only seniors are Alex Siegfried and Corey Hawkins, and they will depart at the end of this season. Duncan Hickman, the fifth-year grad student, we do not believe he will play next year. Not sure if he is eligible or not. We'll 
get back to you on that one. But that means that this Gamecock roster is going to remain largely intact, which is something you don't see year to year at the college level with, uh, you know, guys are rotating in on a four-year cycle. You got a different, completely different roster almost every year, but uh, Gamecocks will have the opportunity to keep the guys they have and get some new ones as well as next year's freshman class comes in. The centering pass knocked down on its way. Hunter Jackal on that one. The puck pops up in the air. Bounces away there from Corey Hawkinson. Flipped out by Michael Peake. Knocked down at center. Alex Siegfried on that one. In the defensive zone, McGill plays that one free. Taken up by Max Galpin. Two goals against South Carolina in the 6-2 victory for the Volunteers. That puck chipped back out. It rolls back down. They go D to D. Fired away by Blake Sledge. That is Sledge wearing 25. He's got McGill on the back of his sweater. And now Mike Bolger sends it up for Julian Reese. Had a goal last night. Tries to dangle inside there. He's rejected and it goes back in. Reese hard on it behind the goal. Doubled up. The Volunteers strip him of possession. As we approach the seven minute mark, the shot's 13 to one in favor of South Carolina. Shot there. And number 14 goes right into the glove of Shaw for a stoppage. Yeah, South Carolina keeping it going offensively. And back to your point, Dylan, about the freshmen on this squad. There are a lot of bright futures that we've seen so far this season. In particular, the two goalies, Liam Gormley and Trip Russell. Liam Gormley, 8-0-1 on the year. Doesn't have a loss yet. And Trip Russell, 9-2-0. Both of those losses were hard fought. The one last night, he still made some phenomenal saves. So there's certainly a bright future in these goaltenders, Dylan, and in a lot of these offensive players as well. You see a ton of improvement. Sorry about that. You see a ton of improvement year to year, especially on the sophomores alone. You look at uh, some of these guys. Ronan Egan, as this puck goes up and out of play, seven goals and seven assists for 14 points last season. And up until last night, when he was overtaken by Julian Reese, he was the Gamecocks' leading point getter. 11-21 for 32. And the same thing, Luke, you can go up and down the lineup. Rudman had a handful of points last year. He's a 10, 15-point guy. And this year, he's top five on the team with 21. So... The young guys continue to get better, and really the sky's the limit in terms of these young players going forward. Around in front, that shot shut down. Cam Mecca hard on that one. Another sophomore for South Carolina. And a big hit there by Nick Peters along the near side board. Tulk goes down hard. Peters good for usually one or two of those every game. And now he's trying to throw another one here. Nick Peters incensed by something. Gamecock defenseman's got to hustle back. For now, Cam Mecca fills in. On the backside for Nick Peters. This puck pops way up in the air. Finally comes right back down to rest, and a couple of players will battle for it. Owen Thomas gets a stick in there. Play continues, and Cam Mecca has the puck. Near side, chips it high. Owen Thomas, he's got Peters headed towards the goal. Thomas down the right side, pulls up, back hitter, sends it in front. Big save by Shaw. The rebound goes high. Peters in front, had an opportunity. Mecca's got the stick knocked out of his hands. And tons of penalties being called right now. Hand motions from the head official. As Peters sends a man down, Connor Hamill in front. He's slow to get up. He's in quite some discomfort right now. I, my eyes were to Owen Thomas along the right side. And again, the support beam not making matters easy for us. I did not see what the, the dust up between Hamill and Peters was. Could you? I could not. Yeah, Thomas had worked the puck in and got a good shot off. And then when that puck had left, there was still a battle out in front of the crease as Peters will go to the box now. And that official was not happy with Nick Peters. Nick Peters trying to plead his case. And good to see Connor Hamill, number eight, for the ice balls skating off to the applause of some of these fans. And he will take a seat in the, bin, in the uh, penalty box now. An insult to injury, you get banged up in front of the net. And as soon as you're back on your feet, well, you got to go right to the penalty box. So we'll skate four on four here, two minutes. Peters and Hamill in the box. One thing a note, Dylan, it's been a pretty disciplined game up to this point, 14 minutes into this first period. We'll have four on four, but Tennessee last night had uh, two penalties, two minor penalties, and they failed to convert on both of those penalty kills. Arkansas uh, convert, converted on both of those power plays. So the special teams of this Ice Vols team has not been that great this tournament nor this season. So we'll see what happens on this four-on-four four as the officials are talking to Drew King now. The Gamecocks ended up going two for five on the power play last night. A couple of power play goals 
that's not a that's not a terrible night in terms of the power play. They surrendered a handful of power play goals against two of them. So effectively, they canceled each other out. The opportunities on the power play were almost equal for both clubs. And you just think of the, that really, that game just came down to inches in every facet. You know, everything was dead even. It came down to inches. Both clubs had a couple of goal posts. And that game could have gone either way, but Auburn victorious, just a hair better. And so South Carolina finds itself matched up against Tennessee. They race back down the right side, the Volunteers. In behind Gormley. With some speed, they go back up to the point. It's Clark. He fakes it, sends one there off the shin guard of Noah Matty. He goes far side corner. Hunter Jackal knocked off. Centering one in front, Colin Burke at the goal line. And now Noah Matty down the right side. Almost dangerous play in front. Bunch was there, staring down Gormley. Seems to be the most vicious net front presence for Tennessee, at least through the first 15 minutes of this hockey game. Minute 14 to go on the four on four. Turned over. Powderly has it. Stick handling in the slot. Pulls up and fires one there. Shaw made the save. Rebound. They score. That puck sitting pretty there for Michael Peake. He tucks it home. 5 0 South Carolina. Five minutes left in this first period. Powderly's all over the place getting that first shot off, but he can't quite. He's got one goal tonight, and he's set up Noah Matty and now Michael Peake. Shaw making that first save, but it's still squeaking out right in front of the crease and an easy tap-in goal for Mike Peake to put this team up 5-0 with five minutes to play in the first. Michael Peake is second goal of the season and right off the drop, Powderly's going to come right back the other way. Powderly driving wide, a backhander sends it in front, a chance for Peake again, almost a carbon copy of the goal just moments ago. The Volunteers shut that one down, it rolls back, chipped back free there for Avery Pruden. Michael Peake sends it again for Powderly. These guys finding some chemistry together. Powderly trying to stick handle again. When the Volunteers go to, goes down, and Galpin's got this puck. Advances this one now down the left side, roaring back. Bobby Stoberski into the slot, broken up there by Peak. He's battling in the corner with Josh Main, and Peak gets sent down hard. Puck rolls free now to Powderly. Czar sends it back in on sides. Couldn't convert on that opportunity. Avery Pruden strips him of control, and he will race up himself. One man against four. Parker West drifting behind him. Now Avery Pruden just being watched by the Volunteers right now. 15 to go on the four on four. That shot sent through the goal mouth. Main crunches Pruden. Reese is on the ice. Walking now down the right wing. Centering pass there. A shot sticked away there by Shaw. Reese had his head up looking like he was trying to feed Avery Pruden who is slow to get back to the Gamecock bench. Parker West drops it off now for Julian Reese. Five on five we are. 3.40 to go in this first period. Five nothing South Carolina. They are a third of the way to that 15-goal mark found by Arkansas last night. And a centering pass there. Julian Reese can't convert it. Drifts back out for Colin Burke. Moves it back down and too far for Luke Rudman. Mike Bolger feeds Reese in the slot. A shot and he scores. Julian Reese, 6-0 South Carolina. And still some time remaining here in this first period. And that puts Julian Reese one goal away from the tying the club record with still a couple games to go in this season. Great shot there from out in front. Good setup by Mike Bolger, who we saw four points from last night. And before that, Gamecocks getting bailed out on that four on four. A great chance for Tennessee on the other end as another defensive miscommunication. But uh, Tennessee couldn't control the puck. And the SEC has enlisted tons of uh, freelance photographers for this tournament. And they retweeted a picture from one of those photographers. His name escapes me right now. I'll get that for you in the first intermission. It's just an outstanding picture from uh, the South Carolina-Auburn game. It, was, I, it looks like it was right after Michael Bolger tied the game. Reese comes over, uh, Reese and Bolger celebrating together, and it's, just, uh, it's really just been this season in a nutshell for those two guys as this puck goes up and out of play. Yeah, and we saw that chemistry yesterday. I mean, it was, it was the Bolger and Reese show last night. Both of them played hero several times, getting South Carolina back in the game and then out in front and it went back and forth and back and forth, but both of those guys have bright futures and have played great games here in this SEC tournament so far. I had a chance to talk with uh, assistant coach John Copelandberg last night upon the team's return to the hotel as we'll have this face-off dropped once again. Just talking about you know, the way 
the players were viewed in tryouts versus how they were viewed right now. Owen Thomas was probably, we, we came to the mutual agreement, Owen Thomas was probably the most standout Gamecock at tryouts. Julian Race and Mike Bolger were definitely notable, but no one had any idea that, that would, they would play the way they have so far this season as Gormley kicks that puck out and Nick Peters is on the rebound. Colin Burke, another guy that stood out in tryouts, but uh, his stature alone would do that for you. A guy that's got all the tools in the toolbox and going to spend the next three years here trying to figure out how to use them. Owen Thomas receives a pass from Ronan Egan, and now it's picked up by Nick Peters. All over the nice ice tonight for South Carolina. John Kolkenberg also noted how much he liked the play of Peters in overtime last night. Peters and Kalega out there almost every other shift for the Gamecocks in uh, single and double overtime. I haven't seen Joe Kalega much tonight. He was uh, victim of a nagging hip injury towards the end of that game. We'll see as this puck fired down on the icing. We'll see if Kalega makes an appearance tonight. He told us on the bus that uh, he'd try to stretch it out in warm-ups and see how he felt after the pregame skate. Although I'm not sure if I see him on the Gamecock bench. Well, back to, back to Peters, Dylan. He had played a pretty good season into the season as a forward working his way there. But if you remember back in the Charlotte game, a suspension issued out for Ryan McGowan, and he had to move back to his original role as D-man. And he played pretty great there, too, especially in overtime coming up big, making a couple defensive stops for the Gamecocks. Gamecocks, without question, their uh, deepest position is at forward, particularly at center and on the left wing. As now Hawkinson, one of the centers, sends a backhander there, and Shaw makes that save. Minute 25 to go here, 6-0 hockey game through the first 18 and a half minutes. Though it's always interesting to see what next year will bring. But before we can get there, we got to get through this game. Still a handful of games left. The Gamecocks welcome Coastal Carolina next weekend. As this puck played around, I will actually, unfortunately, not be able to attend that game. We've got uh, another game I'm trying to call, the uh, ACC tournament in Winston-Salem. So... Zach will take over the play-by-play -play duties, and uh, your, the identity of your color commentator for that night will be revealed later on. So a little bit of a shake-up coming in the next week. And then we just wait for the regional rankings. If the Gamecocks, again, if they hang on to that number two seed in the ACHA South, they get an automatic bid to Nationals in Dallas. That shot high up over the glove of Gormley. Should they sink down to a three, perhaps a four seed? They go to regionals the first weekend of March. Actually cuts into the spring break for South Carolina a little bit here as Gormley battling for that puck along the side of the net. He scoops it up. Makes a save and gets a stoppage here inside a minute to go. Battling on that side of the goal, Bobby Stoberski. He was uh, one of those hard-nosed players that made his presence known against South Carolina back in October, though it, we didn't have camera for that game. It was just an audio broadcast of it all, though I wish you could have seen that game because the battle between Michael Czar and Ryan McGowan was something. McGowan, we talked about, he's one of those guys that uh, he's very composed until he isn't. Sometimes the wires cross for Ryan McGowan. Serving his uh, suspension after the kicking incident last weekend against UNC Charlotte. But Czar and McGowan got under each other's skin. As this puck played back out off the near side boards and chipped all the way back in inside 30 seconds, we've got an icing. And that'll send the play all the way back down once again. Yeah, right now only four shots on goal for Tennessee this period with 25 seconds remaining in the period. Their offense has been lacking so far tonight, but South Carolina doing a good job of making sure that offense doesn't get shots on Liam Gormley shutting down passing lanes and odd man opportunities when they have the chance. Off the defensive zone draw, hit by Hunter Jackal in that far side corner. The puck rolls for Colin Burke. Tries the zone exit pass, it goes too far there. Pete Bunch almost intercepted it. Noah Maddy sends this one back in, Shaw makes the save. An easy save and in behind the goal, Powderly off the turnover. Feeds one in front, Chad Lazina shot there and Shaw shrugs it off with the right shoulder. Again in front, Lazina backhander and that will be the end of the period as Shaw absorbs that one. So six goals in the first period for South Carolina. None for the Volunteers. The shot's 24-4 to 
in favor of the Gamecocks as you see Shaw having a conversation with one of his defensemen down to our right. We'll step aside for intermission. We'll gather some of that information for you. And when we come back, we'll let you know what's going on here. Second period coming your way on the Capital City Sports Network presented by SGTV.
Welcome back to the Capital City Sports Network. Second period about to begin here. South Carolina and Tennessee. After 20 minutes, the Gamecocks outshot the Volunteers 24 to 4. Outscored them 6 to nothing. And so the second period in this consolation game about to begin. And we do have a goaltending change. And I was looking for that one. Looks like the night is done for Brendan Shaw. Baylor Winkoff comes in. The Volunteers actually dressed three goaltenders. Shaw, Winkoff, and James Maples, again, who had 44 saves on 59 shots last night against Arkansas. So Shaw is out. Winkoff comes in. And the Gamecocks will move right to left down towards Winkoff here in this second period. Corey Hawkinson to go for it at center ice here. He's on with Alex Siegfried and Michael Peake. Colin Burke and Hunter Jackal, Hunter Jackal start out again. Liam Gormley remains between the pipes for South Carolina here. They win that opening draw. And Colin Burke chips this one in off the boards here. Away from Alex Siegfried. It comes back now for Burke. Burke on that rolling puck. Too far past Siegfried. Chip back in here. The Volunteers whack at it. Pops up in the air. And a collection of players. No one can really come away with it. It's in the skates of Hawkinson. He gets a double crunch there. Hit up high. Burke fires one. He scores. First goal in a Gamecock uniform for Colin Burke, and it's 7-0. The Gamecocks strike. Just 24 seconds here into this second period. It's 7-0. Yeah, we saw in the last couple of games in the regular season, Colin Burke starting to get more aggressive offensively. Had a couple of chances on net in that UNC Charlotte game. And here, gets the puck off a massive hit against Corey Hawkinson. Took that one up high. And you saw the jolt in his head as he went back. The puck rolled out to Colin Burke, and Colin Burke, good finish. First shot on new goaltender Baylor Weinkoff, and the first goal for South Carolina. You kind of see Winkoff was off his angle there. You saw he, he was giving Colin Burke that entire short side up and over the blocker. And the conversation right now, I believe, if I had to take a guess, would be about that hit on Corey Hawkinson. He stepped into, again, it was just a, a strange double play, kind of pinballed in between two players. Got a shoulder to the chest, and then he kind of fell and got one to the head there. You do not see exactly where Hawkinson is on the bench. They're going to take a penalty. Yeah. John Clark in the box right now for the Vols. And we talked about their special teams earlier. They weren't as good last night. Didn't kill a single penalty of the two they had yesterday. And they've already given up a goal on the four on four that we saw in the first period. So now's the time for South Carolina to take advantage and continue that offensive output. And when they do decide on the voting for the ACHA South, they'll look at, they consider a number of things, obviously the wins and the losses, the strength of schedule and the margin of victory. So for South Carolina, they're gonna score until they can't score anymore. 15 goals against last night for the Volunteers. A shot ricocheted out in front. Seven goals against already this morning. And we're not even a minute into the second period. Tyler Oakley wrestles the puck away from King. Stoberski in the slot there, taken away by Noah Maddy. He's out there with Oakley and Peters on this power play, as well as Chad Lazine and Ian Powderly. They have doubled up on Ian Powderly there. He's got the puck right now, though, in front of his own bench. Walking in, sends it back down for Maddie up top now. Nick Peters walks in, fires one high there. That one goes up and over, catches the glass and can be rescued there by Powderly. One-handed ahead, the Volunteers take over, though. It's Galpin out to center, Tyler Oakley. Now across for Nick Peters. We're going to pack in again. Nick Peters wheeling and dealing out there. He goes in behind the goal. Now on the near side, Peters looking up top, picked up by Maddie. He's going to hesitate and fire that one there low. It's ricocheted off in front. Peters again from the goal line. All over the place. He's registered on defense, but uh, he's a mobile guy. Not surprised to see him in any particular area of the ice. Oakley now tries to pay, put that one back for Noah Maddy. It's chipped away from him. Now shorthanded an opportunity. Back the other way for Tennessee. Michael Zarr down the left wing tries to throw that one in front. It pops up, and coming back now Luke Ribman just going to clap that one off the boards. And now it's Julian Reese, a two-on-one back the other way. He's got Parker West with him. West in front, and that puck goes in between the skates. West has it again, and drops it now for Pruden. Comes in, fires that one there, and that one goes off the uh, goaltender's stick. Winkoff makes the save. The puck comes all the way back down for Gormley. Drops it off for Avery Pruden. 
Penalty time has expired. The Gamecocks go 0 for 1. The first penalty kill of the tournament here for Tennessee. Now a stoppage here. They will say, looks like too many men on the ice is the call. And right back to the power play go the Gamecocks. Yeah, Tennessee shooting themselves in the foot. That's penalty will be served by number eight, Connor Hamill. But as soon as they kill off that power play, they let up another one. And a mental mistake, really. Can't have too many men on the ice take those penalties. It's, it's tough and already down 7-0. You just want to play for some pride right now. And this certainly isn't helping your case. Julian Reese off the draw. That one popped up in front. Luke Rudman kind of one-handing that one. It's held in at the line there by Avery. Pruden bounces around, and Pruden kicks that one off. It comes back to the neutral zone here. He'll take a whack at it. A little fanned on clearing attempt. King can't hang on to it. Captain for Tennessee. Bolger turns over his left shoulder. Surveys the land and decides to go wide here. Bolger by himself. Heads up, hit from behind. Loses the puck, and now it's Pruden. A sharp angle shot. That one stopped by Winkoff. Pruden on the rebound, though. The defenseman down low for South Carolina. Played forward all the way up until... He arrived at college, and a player down in front of the net. That'll send Luke Rudman to the box, so four on four. Yeah, Rudman, another penalty out in front from wrestling with each other right in front of the crease. We saw that earlier, and now we'll have another four on four opportunity for the remaining 130 of that first too many men penalty. As Burke gives us Pal Luke Rudman a wave in the box. And we will have a face-off in the Tennessee offensive zone. Interference, the call to Rudman. Four on four. They've called out that it puts Tennessee on the power play. That is incorrect. Not sure if you heard that. Don't want you to get confused. Four on four for a minute 29. Defensive zone draw coming up here for the Gamecocks. King against Corey Hawkinson. King wins that one back. A quick shot right off the draw. Gormley has some trouble with the rebound. It goes off the bottom of his glove there, and he covers up. That one Look, like stung him a little bit. He'll make some adjustments there to his uh, trapper. Just a fifth shot on goal in this hockey game. That has come Liam Gormley's way. The shot's 26-5 to five right now, and... Another one rolls in on Gormley. They'll count that one as a shot. Shot number six saved as well. A minute 20 to go on this four on four, and then it will be a brief, brief power play for Tennessee on the other side of this one. Off the draw here, Corey Hawkinson has it. He's been all over the place the last two games for South Carolina. His second game back from injury. He's going to wheel it up himself. He's been the target of some physical play this afternoon. Don't expect that to continue. And, you know, he's got some trouble with the puck. Rolls up the near side. Josh Main plays that one back in. Into the skate of Hunter Jackal. Soft pass up for Hawkinson. He'll double back to his own zone. Wheeling away here. Now he spins off Stoberski. Down the right side. Corey Hawkinson. One goal tonight already. Away from Alex Siegfried. And back the other way. For the ice vols. A loose stick was kicked away by the official. Now a shot there. Pops off the shaft of Colin Burke's stick. First real quality opportunity for Tennessee here. Drew King crossing through the slot. And had it not been for that shot blocked by Colin Burke, that would have been a pretty good opportunity. Yeah, good recovery by Colin Burke. And not a surprise that that opportunity coming off the stick of number 17, Drew King. We talked about it earlier. Had two goals. The only two goals for Tennessee in that game against Arkansas. Had a penalty earlier in this one. But a good opportunity by Drew King. Owen Thomas now motors up through center. Moves it out down wide, taken down in front of the Gamecock bench. That'll draw a delayed penalty. Gormley heads towards the bench. Loose in there, will touch it. So two men in the box now for Tennessee. That will negate their impending power play. Gormley stops the puck for the official. And so we will skate four on three here for 18 more seconds. Yeah, and nothing really Tennessee could do about that. Owen Thomas showcasing the speed, working down the right side. He just blew by his man. Number 16, that's John Clark, who will be going off to the box. And Clark had nothing left, so he had to turn around and stop him, or else would have been a golden opportunity on goal for Owen Thomas. 
And now only seven skaters on the ice. We'll see if South Carolina can take advantage of it. Right off the draw, it's Parker West. He's going to hesitate and send that one there. Into the corner. That'll send Owen Thomas. Lots of room out there. Owen Thomas back now for Avery Pruden. A long shot there. Knocked down in front. Paddle. He cashes in on the rebound. Another power play goal. 8-0 South Carolina, 15-28 to go in the second period. Powderly is second of the game. Got a couple of assists in there as well, third point. Now Powderly having himself a game right now. He's working his way out in front of the goal and getting shots on net, and either those shots go in or they bounce out for somebody else to put in, and that's been the kind of night South Carolina's had so far. And uh, they will send their original number one line back out of Mecca, Egan, and Thomas to take this one. The Gamecocks now one for three on the power play in this one. Four on four now for 27 more seconds. And then the power play comes back to South Carolina. It'll be at five on four. Parker West skating out. Watch there by Bunch. Roaring down the right side. Almost hit into the official and the puck. Stuck there. Coming back is Cam Mecca now on it. Avery Pruden clapped back in there. Rolling puck blockered aside by Gormley. And so now Mecca has to start out again. Out of the box, Luke Rudman. Gamecocks on the power play. Ronan Egan from the goal line now. Centers in front for his captain. That one goes off a skate. And this one backhanded back out. Avery Pruden fires one long range. Blocked in front. Burke following on now. Shot that one knocked down on its way as well. A bouncer in the slot. Can't be settled down by Hunter Jackal. It's knocked away. And Colin Burke will have to come back for this one. And helping him out is Avery Pruden. That sends Cam Mecca and He gets taken down. Play continues. The loose puck rolls free. It looked like all of the players there in white sweaters looked like they expected a penalty. The puck in behind the goal and stopped by the goaltender. More reinforcements come on, and this puck fired back in, delayed offsides, getting a little over-anxious on that one. Michael Czar, he does not know that it was offsides. And so this will be sent back in, down the other way. 20 seconds remain in the South Carolina power play. 14.02 in the second period. They are out shooting Tennessee 29-6. And this is not the only game going down here at the Ford Ice Center. Zach, would you like to take us through what we have on tap for the rest of the day? Why, of course, Dylan. Second, the second consolidation game between FAU and Georgia Tech is after this one at 1.45 Central Time. And then the two semifinal games, the first 6.30 Central Time is Arkansas, that number one seed, and Georgia, that number four seed. Following that one, the late game tonight, 9.15, the one the Gamecocks could be playing in if that double overtime gain had gone differently. That's between Ole Miss and Auburn. And then those third place and final games are tomorrow. King wrestling through here, shorthanded for the Volunteers. He chips it into the near side corner. Tyler Oakley goes after him, and now Powderly works it free. He'll skate it on now himself. A couple of upsets here. The uh, number seven and six seeds take down their opponents. And the numbers one and four the higher of the two. Georgia, number four, and Arkansas, number one. Heavy favorites to win this tournament right now. Georgia, winners of three of the last four SEC tournaments, 2016, 2017, and 2019. The reigning champs at the moment as Noah Maddy gets taken down in front. Arkansas won it all in 2018. They have won the most championships. Again, as we said, and this is the 11th SEC HC tournament. There have only been four winners. Tennessee won the first one in 2009 as the Gamecocks wait to touch up here. They can't do it, so they're off sides. Tennessee won the first one, and then it was a collection of Arkansas wins, then Alabama and Georgia, and that's it. So four winners in 10 and now 11 seasons. And if Arkansas or Georgia wins it all again, that trend continues. Now it'll be four winners in 12 complete running or 11 complete runnings of the tournament so it's uh it's the task of of Ole Miss and Auburn to maybe uh rewrite things a little bit here in the SEC and we've certainly seen a lot of talent between those two teams that we didn't necessarily expect one of the things that we saw from Ole Miss as Parker West streaks down the left side 
is their goalie has four shutouts on the year in only six games. One of the younger goalies in the SEC, but he has been great, and he shut down that team yet last night to get the bid to the semifinal. 5-3, the final score of that game. FAU, notably high-scoring team. They got one of their guys on their squad. 66 points through just 23 games, I believe. Reminiscent of Carter Penzian, and uh, those of you who've been fans of the Gamecocks for a while know all about the man who wore number 27 for Georgia. As this play whistled down here, we've got an icing. Oh, we've got a high stick here. I'll send someone to the box. Carter Penzian put up, I believe it was 72 points, his final season at the University of Georgia in 25 games tops. He and the eldest Santa Maria brother, Chris, were terrorizing the entire conference. Probably the two biggest reasons that Georgia was able to win that championship in the SEC last season. But now they have moved on, and Caleb Santa Maria kind of has the reins for the Ice Dogs over there in Athens. So penalty Avery Pruden in the box here. Two minutes for high sticking. That'll send Tennessee to the power play. And they work it down on the far side. Colin Burke wrestles a stick free from the man, and Hunter Jackal moves this one up the far side. Julian Reese after it, battling for it by himself. And now racing now is Bolger, and coming out to play this one, the Tennessee net miner. Winkoff plays it out back to the red line. Hunter Jackal has seen a ton of ice time tonight and sends this one back out across. And Bolger after a misplay by the Volunteers. He's got it. He'll take that one any way he can get it. Julian Reese gets a stick up high. Two big hits there in the corner. And Reese just keeps on motoring. In the far side corner. Creates a turnover. Bolger in front of shot. Big save. Winkoff collision in front. Follow-up chance. Reese and that one down in front. Finally loose. They put that one wide. Winkoff laying on his back for 10 seconds. Couldn't get up. Julian Reese without a stick. Throws a hit. Play continues. A minute left on the man advantage for Tennessee. Back now, it's Burke off a turnover with Bolger. Burke a goal already tonight. His first in a Gamecock uniform. Sends it across there. He thought Bolger would be home. Instead, Bolger turned over his shoulder and headed toward the bench. This puck played back in off a of stanchion. Back deep into the Tennessee zone. That was one of the stranger net mouth scrambles we've seen in the last little while. And now a collision, and Owen Thomas is down behind the play inside the Tennessee zone. Slow to get back up, and play continues here. Volunteer is not exactly moving. Connor Hamill advances this one. Owen Thomas still out there for South Carolina. Motoring around is Winkoff, and Thomas goes awkwardly into the boards. He lost an edge there. Tough shift for Owen Thomas as Nick Peters receives a hit there from Josh Main. Luke Rudman comes on now. Tries to feed Thomas. The puck comes back over the back side of the blue line, and Owen Thomas hurries to get off the ice here. Puck in behind the Tennessee net. Ian Powderly disrupting. Gamecocks back at even strength. They have killed off the power play, or the penalty, rather. Ronan Egan in front, and Mecca battling for it there, and this will bring a crowd. Yep, it was only a matter of time before this happened, and someone comes back in. A huge hit from Mecca in behind. Max Galpin came in and buried. It was Ronan Egan, my apologies. And one of the volunteers is still down on the ice. It looks like uh, John be. Clark, perhaps. And th this was really, th there, was, there was a countdown to this. With, with all the hits and all the, with the score being the way it is, the frustration from this weekend for both, for both clubs, uh, it, it was only a matter of time. Yeah, and you had a, a power play for Tennessee where South Carolina shorthanded has more chances on goal. You can see Tennessee's obviously getting frustrated and another chance out in front of the goal. A scramble, just one shove leads to another and picks up from there. We saw Egan go down hard. I think you were right. It was Max Galpin that came in and, from out of nowhere and shoved Egan to the ground and then following that someone else was shoved to the ground and as they sort things out I think we will be four on four here as currently Winkoff with his mask off talking to one of his defenders in a uh, physical game so far Dylan 
Waiting to hear the official call here. We've got two minutes up on the boards. Cam Mecca's penalty the only one that's up there right now. We are playing four on four. Unless my eyes deceive me. I don't think we've been here that long. So in behind the volunteer net. And now almost a home run pass there up to Connor Hamill. Had some trouble with it. It kicked off the back of his stick. Tyler Oakley battles with Hamill in the near side corner. Rolling on now Josh Main down low. Takes a big hit there. He puts Tyler Oakley down. And Ronan Egan picks it up and sends it back the other way. He's got Ian Powderly and Nick Peters with him. Egan motoring. Pushed off far side. Sends one up high. Loose in front. Peters can't cash in on the rebound. Comes back now. Away from Connor Hamill and played all the way down. Tyler Oakley no worse for wear. Behind his goaltender Gormley. The shot's on goal. 31-6 in favor of South Carolina. And almost a two-on-one develops here for Ronan Egan and Chad Lazine. Sent cross ice. That pass intercepted. The Volunteers come back. Two on O. Oh. Game cocked out a hustle back at Czar. Takes a shot there. Goes high up over the glass. Gormley's beside himself. He can't believe uh, the gaff by the game cocked defenseman. Drew King has the puck now. He tries to put it away from Noah Maddy. Nick Peters comes on to help. Over the game cocked blue line now through the neutral zone. Puts it off the boards. Plays it to himself. Peters tries to feed Lazine in front. He can't do it. The Volunteers have it here. 43 seconds on the four on four. And Galpin and Mecca will be released. Chad Lazine centers in front. Maddie the shot, a big save there by Wintkoff. The rebound goes wide and is played back in by the Volunteers. Round to the near side. Noah Maddie goes for a hit and fans a little bit on that one. And now back the other way comes Czar across the red line, two on one. Gamecock's got a hustle back and nicely knifed away there by Avery Prudent. A little flat footed on that one was Parker West. And now still miscommunication in the own zone by South Carolina. Chipped in the near side, taken by Wes. Inside the eight minute mark of the middle frame here. Consolation game, South Carolina, the number two seed, knocked off by number seven Auburn in double overtime. Tennessee, the number eight taken down by Auburn. The heavy favorites to win this tournament. Volunteers coming back now with numbers, though. Those numbers do head towards the bench, and uh, it'll advise pass. That'll send the Gamecocks back three on one. Hawkinson from Siegfried, they can't hang on to it. And one of the Volunteers blows a tire in front, slides into his goaltender. And another whistle and a faceoff here. 7-10 to go. And uh, not sure I've seen a game quite like this one. Not, not this season. Just the, the overall pace, the feel of it. It's, uh, it's, it's something different. And we've seen some, a little bit of laziness from South Carolina there, creating that two on oh. Michael Zarr bails him out by skying the shot, had the one on one with the keeper and couldn't do anything with it. But in the middle of a line change, another defensive miscommunication, and Zarr with the chance followed up with another chance in the offensive zone. But Avery Pruden shut that one down. And now some more conversation, some more delay. Nothing new here at the SEC tournament. There seems to be a lot of conversations between them. The players will take a rest. And, and you talked about those uh, laziness, mental mistakes, whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's understandable when it's 8 nothing with a uh, little less than half the game to go. But, again, as we said in the pregame show, this game still matters. This game still matters in the rankings. And if you can lock up a spot to nationals without having to go to regionals, you save yourself some man games and the possibility that players can get injured. You save yourself tons of money because you only have to make one long bus trip for 25 guys instead of two as that puck knifed out in front by Winkoff. So there are huge, huge incentives to play well and not fall asleep in the middle of the game. As the Volunteers come back, King trying to register a shot, he scores! Drew King, a twisted wrister upstairs over the blocker of Gormley. You heard it tip the crossbar. Volunteers are on the board at 8-1. to one. Yeah, another slow entry back into the zone. And Drew King, as we've talked about, had the two goals for Tennessee in the SEC game yesterday. The one so far today. Finishes that one beautifully. Top left. High cheese right there. And Drew King puts Tennessee on the board with their seventh shot on goal. And you're right, Dylan, this game still does mean th something for both squads, as Tennessee has so many fans out here tonight to watch them. And are underrated 
facet for South Carolina is the business aspect where you don't have to spend that money to go to regionals if things play out in your favor. Michael Garcia with the lone assist on the King goal. Ends the shutout bid for Liam Gormley. He's got one shutout this season, and uh, for the foreseeable future, the total will remain at one. Luke Rudman in after with some speed here. Perhaps this will wake up some of the players, and that one tipped out in front. Back the other way, Peters shovels it on across. Gamecock got a touch up. Reese was off sides. That one thrown in, chipped up into the glass by the goaltender. Whistle and a stoppage here. 6 11 to go, second period. 8 to 1 now, thanks to that goal from Drew King. Three goals in this tournament for King, the only three for the Volunteers. Yeah, and he has really been producing all the offense for the Volunteers. We saw Michael Zarr, who had one goal in the, uh, the win ten Tennessee had against South Carolina earlier this season. Had a couple of chances, but he couldn't finish on those. So right now, all the offense for Tennessee going through Drew King. From the point, a long shot knocked down on its way and crashing awkwardly into the goal is Luke Rudman. Back to his feet. The net stays on its anchors. And back the other way come the Volunteers. Bunch, right wing, closed out by Nick Peters. It rolls around far side on Thomas. Has some trouble with it. Bounces up into the air. Thomas bodied off there. And now playing that one as he falls, Justin Stackhouse. And in behind the goal, the Gamecocks will try to take over. Peters. Bouncer played away from Owen Thomas. Gains the red line. Julian Reese still on sides. Thomas down the right side. Sends one there. And another save with the stick by Winkoff. Michael Bolger on the loose puck. And now back to the way the Volunteers come. Gamecocks headed for a line change. Czar coming with speed. A shot right on. Gormley absorbs that one into the midsection for another faceoff as both teams were headed towards the bench. 5.09 to go in the period. And it looks like Tennessee's developed the offensive strategy of as soon as you get the puck into the offensive zone, get a shot off. Don't try and wait to find something because that puck might not be in the offensive zone for as long. And the, the Gamecocks are doing the exact opposite as Cam Mecca enters. Mecca down the left wing all alone. The Gamecock capped in a back end shot. Big save by Winkoff. The rebound clatters off the top of the net. Mecca denied by a left pad save. And the puck chopped back down for Ronan Egan. One of the Volunteers calling for a penalty, he doesn't get it. Now Mecca, the one-time shot fought off by Winkoff. He saw Drew King come to a complete stop there. Throw his hands up in the air for a penalty. Play continues, though. And now Owen Thomas from the goal line. Centers one for Egan. Knocked down, back the other way the Volunteers come. Lumbering back, down the left wing. Chipped back in by Czar. Taken off now by Avery Pruden. He'll throw a shoulder check there into the chest of Drew King. A centering pass by Czar, knocked down on its way. Back to the point, Josh Main, top of the circles, fluttering shot, knocked down on its way. And now Czar, centering pass again. Tipped off the skate of Ronan Egan to the far side. Ian Powderly, leading scorer in this hockey game. A little shake up in the lines. Cam Mecca out there. Ian Powderly has kind of flip-flopped with Owen Thomas. And this one played away from, away from Ronan Egan. Cam Mecca has it in the slot now. Powderly is shot upstairs, hit the crossbar. Ricochets up and out of play. Powderly will have to wait a little longer for that hat trick. Still some time to go here in the second. And Powderly creating a lot of the offense for South Carolina. He's been all over the place so far tonight. Colin Burke has played really well two ways, making plays on defense and getting shots off on offense, picking up his first goal of the season. And a quick shot off that faceoff. Chad Lazine fought off there by Winkoff. Nobody really wanted that puck as it sat in front of the Tennessee goal. Colin Burke spins away from a man. Six foot five, and that kid can move around sometimes. In the slot, Burke still after. Noah Matty filling in for him on defense. And now back the other way, gathering speed and playing this one up into the bench there. Narrowly missing assistant coach. Looks like Scott Carter down on the right side of the Tennessee bench. And as we said, the Volunteers have dressed three goaltenders. I doubt we will see James Maples. Brandon, uh, Brendan Shaw is done for the night. Six goals in the first period. And Winkoff has played well here through the second. In front of the Gamecock bench, play continues. Chad Lazine, right wing, fires one again, another rebound up high. Puck settles down and Powderly shot. He uh, put his hands up as though he scored. 
And he, nice save there right on by Winkoff. And that is a glance into the personality of Ian Powderly. Never takes too, anything too seriously. He's always a lighthearted guy on the bench for South Carolina. And in games like this one, you need that. Yeah, and it's good to see him playing well tonight. Winkoff with a couple of big saves. Another important thing to note for South Carolina, they haven't won an SECHC tournament game in three years or since Dylan and I have been here at the least. So another incentive for winning this game is breaking that streak. A shot by Hawkinson goes wide there. You hopefully will remember Brett Williams and Robert McCachron. Broadcast team here that got everything started and they were the last two to see a Gamecock win here in Nashville. I believe it was in the first round against Florida and the Gamecocks fell to Georgia in the second round. I might have that backwards and if I do, I apologize. Again, the, the record keeping is an awkward check in behind the goal. The record keeping is a little difficult to find and this puck played high and that'll chip off the netting right here in front of the main gate. So a face off and no one seems to be worse for wear after that collision. It looked like Hawkinson got a solid body in behind. He's been a target tonight, I would say. Yeah, he's taken a couple of big hits. That one there behind the net. And this game remains physical. Tennessee still laying checks. Down seven goals here with 2.30 in the second. And we talked about Rob Lawrence is out of the lineup tonight for South Carolina. Again, a healthy scratch with Evan Hoey, Duncan Hickman, Ryan McGowan. And now a chance down low for Bolger. Tries to center one there. But we were talking about the role of Rob Lawrence. Again, he's, he is a role player. Rob Lawrence, one of those guys that uh, when he's on your team, he's always a favorite among teammates. And when you play against him, he's always the guy you hate to see out there on the ice. He's physical, sometimes to a fault. He draws penalties. And that was, that was the thing. Rob Lawrence, again, takes a considerable amount of penalty minutes, 43 on the season. But he draws. I mean, think of how many penalties he, he has drawn for South Carolina, getting under the skin of other players. And so you see a game when he's not in the lineup and the target kind of shifts because he's almost guaranteed to be the other team's main target if he is in the lineup. So he's not, and now Hawkinson's taking the brunt of it here tonight because it seems like Hawkinson's had the puck more than anybody else. As that puck spins away from Julian Reese and the Volunteers come all the way back, Reese gets spun around. Gaining the line is King, and he's going to try to do what he did before. High blocker over Gormley, though he put it over the crossbar as well. Bolger takes a hit there from Czar, catches an edge and gets a face into the boards and now it's Julian Reese all alone. Reese had that puck roll up on him though. I have to wait a little bit longer here for goal number 22 on the career. That would tie the club record, again set by Eric Patterson back in 2014. Reese sits at 21 right now with one goal already in this game. He sends one there through the goal mouth. Following on is Burke there. That one stopped by Winkoff. Rebound off the outside of the cage. Rudman can't find that one, and this puck sent all the way back down past Parker West. One official signaled for the icing. The other one waved it off, and Gormley having some trouble playing that puck. He gets bumped into there by Sean Nolan. And there is one minute remaining here in the period. Both Gamecock goaltenders have spent some considerable time working on handling the puck in practice over the last few weeks. A shot there, that one goes wide. Follow-up chance by Pete Bunch, tapped into the pads of Liam Gormley. He'll put the glove on for a whistle. Little jab as he went by Connor Hamill. And things kind of settling down here after that scrum that uh, kicked off the, first uh, the second period, rather. Yeah, Tennessee getting a couple shots on net. Uh, some more offensive opportunities here in the latter stages of this second period. Connor Hamill with a nice shot there. Liam Gormley shuts it down. Off the defensive zone faceoff, Ronan Egan having some trouble with it again. Hunter Jackal has to step in. And a turnover though, back the other way. Come the Volunteers, a shot goes high and catches the glass once again. Mecca taken into the boards, the puck rolls free now for Owen Thomas. And Hunter Jackal sends it up for Colin Burke. He'll let Owen Thomas pick this one up down the right side. Fires one there, a quick shot up high. Winkoff makes the save. Mecca on the rebound, taken into the boards. Far side for the Volunteers. Hamill has it and waits and slings that one, though it's played by a high stick. And he'll wave it off and uh, let the clock hit zeros as that puck comes back for Hunter Jackal. 
So six goals in the first period for South Carolina. The score was 6-0 after 20. A pair of goals here in the second. One for Tennessee. It's 8-1 after 40 minutes. Shots on goal, 37-9 in favor of South Carolina. We'll step aside and gather our wits, gather our stats, gather our information. And, and there was one thing that I, I promised I would tell you in the intermission. I, I was talking about one of the freelance photographers that was here at the tournament. His name is Joseph Summers, taking lots of pictures of the uh, South Carolina-Auburn game. You can follow his work at JMS Sports Photo on Twitter, or you can go to the SEC Hockey Conference. You can go to their Twitter account, and uh, they've retweeted everything and have brought you numerous updates on the tournament as they come. So we'll step aside here. 8-1 to one South Carolina after 2. Capital City Sports Network, presented by SGTV.
Welcome back to the Capital City Sports Network. Just about to begin the third period here. South Carolina leading Tennessee 8-1 to one here in the consolation game. The Gamecocks, the number two seed coming into this tournament. Tennessee, number eight. And uh, one last period for the Gamecocks from Nashville. Opening face-off. Tennessee controls. Chip back out, and now Broda picks it up for Tennessee. They go D to D. Czar out across the red line. Steps in, sends one off a leg there. And now Cam Mecca with Ronan Egan out of the lineup for the remainder of the game. An undisclosed reason. Nolan Thomas back down the right side. Sends one there. Nice blocker saved by Winkoff. Bouncing puck corralled by Mecca. In behind the goal with Thomas. Mecca wheeling, sends one through the goal mouth. Too far for Peters. Colin Burke doubles back. It looks like Nick Peters back on offense tonight for the South Carolina. As a rolling puck sent all the way back down past Gormley. Jackal touches it up. And Zach, we talked in the intermission about uh, the concept of a consolation game. Had a chance to talk with uh, official tweet curator of the game, Cox, Charlie Miller. And a lot can happen in a, in a consolation game. Now, for South Carolina battling for, uh, for that number two slot in regionals, this game does matter, but in this context, both teams are upset. Both teams are ready to run through each other. And this, I mean, this game could go very differently right now with, with all the things that have gone on and all the context that surrounds this game. I mean, the only thing that, that stands to happen is players just get mad and start hurting each other. Yeah, the, uh, the emotion yesterday from the South Carolina team after that heart-wrenching loss to Auburn they were kind of down in the dumps, honestly, coming into this game today. So in one way, you can see it as a way where right now South Carolina are in position to leave this tournament with something happy, something to build upon. And on the other hand, after that Auburn game, the team was dead, really. Um, so we'll see. The, the concept of consolation games as a whole is interesting, but when South Carolina is in the position where they are in the ACHA needing to win a game, it was important to be able to play this one. Oakley from the blue line here. Minute and a half gone in this third period. A quick shot there by Bolger goes low and wide. Avery Prudent struggling after that puck. He missed a considerable amount of games earlier this season with a nagging groin injury. Keep an eye on him. Joe Kalega has not played a shift in this game due to some hip problems. So Julian Reese fires that one high and wide. The Gamecocks will leave Nashville with uh, some sore pride and uh, some sore bodies as well. Oakley creeping down low. He's going to battle there in the near side corner with Ryan Siebert. Takes a hit. The puck rolls free. Out to the far side now, Josh Main. Intercepted by Julian Reese. Puck flipped all the way back out now, and Pruden takes over. Tennessee in the middle of a line change. Rudman trying to capitalize on that. He'll flip it back in and go to the bench himself. And there was a conversation after that first game, 15 to two, Arkansas over Tennessee. We just happened to be in the media room with the commissioner, Justin Bradford, and some of the guys, they were having a conversation about, well, perhaps a mercy rule, perhaps a running clock when it gets to uh, seven or an eight goal deficit. And uh, the commissioner was steadfast. He said, no, you come here, you play the game. You play the game the right way, so. I would not expect any running clocks anytime in the near future, regardless of the score here. Back for Parker West at the point. Tipped on its way. It goes wide. Drew King along the far side. He'll play that one up into the roof. And judging by the looks, I mean, you should see the roof of the Plex. There's puck marks all over that thing. The roof is a little lower there, if I'm not mistaken. Nothing is not as low as the pavilion. Clemson's arena has got the lowest in October. Practice facility for the Nashville Predators and the old practice facility, Fordyce Center in Antioch. That is still used, and I was a little surprised to learn that there's still a, a, a desperate need. That they're having a hard time getting everybody on the ice. So, and again, hockey in Nashville has exploded in the past few years. They need more ice sheets. They need more ice time for people to come in adult leagues and, and, and uh, youth leagues and all that, and it's really, it's... it's it's incredible to see how much the game has grown 
and just in this is our third season being here. Yeah, hockey in the South in general, we talk about it pretty frequently in our regular season games at the Plex, how, how many fans have came out recently, having so many that the fire marshal had to control the, uh, the standings. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people, upwards of 840 for one of those games. And uh, it's impressive to see the growth of hockey. Shot off the outside of the cage there. Alex Siegfried had an open net for a second there. But he loses control, and he's taken down. Siegfried goes for a swim. And now Hawkinson back to the neutral zone, carrying on himself. Hawkinson lowers the shoulder there against Pete Bunch. Has the puck there near side, sends it across for Michael Peak. One goal already tonight. Behind the Tennessee goal, they'll control it. it comes now and's flipped back across, chipped away there. And back, Hunter Jackal has it inside his own zone. One of the many, many Massachusetts natives on for South Carolina on the squad. He's the only one on the ice right now. Avery Pruden out of Pennsylvania. Jackal, Massachusetts. Gormley out of New York down to our left. Siegfried and Hawkinson, the native South Carolinians. Michael Peake out of Virginia. Now the puck rolls free and taken back. The counterattack for Tennessee's Bobby Stoberski, shut down by the game. Cox and Peak tries to send that one for Hawkinson, though he turns it over and a whistle and a face off on the offsides. And that, that whistle, again, if you'll remember, there was the discrepancy as to whether or not the whistle was blown at one point during the Auburn game. Half the players stopped, half of them didn't. The official you know, just proceeded as if nothing had happened. And that whistle, to me, at least through my, ear, my headset, Sounded the same as the whistle that wasn't called. And now here's Mecca chance alone on the backhand of shot. Shut down there by Winkoff. Nice save by the Tennessee netminder. And that'll send a counterattack back the other way for the ice balls. Stoberski centering pass there for King. Lone goal in this hockey game for the Volunteers. The only three in this tournament. That shot goes wide. Low to the glove side on Gormley. Owen Thomas doubles back and sends it on for Colin Burke. See an extensive ice time and if... If I had to guess, I'd say he and Peters have spent the most time on the ice for South Carolina as far as defensemen are concerned. Though Nick Peters not exactly a defenseman anymore, at least in this hockey game. Delayed penalty coming up here. The Gamecocks will be shorthanded. A hold is the call. The guilty party? Up for debate. Yeah, in South Carolina. With a couple of offensive opportunities to start this period, we saw Owen Thomas right off the jump undressing a player, working his way in, and then Cam Mecca just recently weaving his way through two defensemen and going forehand, backhand, good shot on the uh, Tennessee goaltender. But right now, they will be shorthanded as Colin Burke will sit in the box for two minutes. Another opportunity here for the Gamecocks to work on the penalty kill. They chip this one all the way back out. Past Blake Sledge. And they'll play this one in off the dasher. Coming back over is Sledge again. Got McGill on the name plate. But it is Blake Sledge according to our roster and all the websites. Luke Rudman fires that one back down. And again, you can't always trust the name plates. If there's one thing I've learned in, uh, in my two and a half years calling ACHA hockey, you don't always trust the nameplates. Noah Maddy, the only Gamecock that doesn't have one, Michael Peake, until recently had his name misspelled on his nameplate. Parker West fires that one back out. It's gloved down and held there, and right back into the skates of Ian Powderly. Two goals all right tonight. Back by himself. Powderly, a backhand shot. Big save by Winkoff. The rebound climbed off the outside of the frame. Big opportunity for Powderly. He's carrying guys to the net. Back in by himself, trying to undress a couple a volunteer defenseman. Powderly short-handed. Still trying to disrupt things as Pete Bunch now gets across the red line. Down the left wing goes wide on Pruden. Rudman out off the boards. Turned over. The volunteers continue to push that puck back in deep. Parker West doing everything he can to get it back deep the other way. No icing. Because the Gamecocks are shorthanded. 33 seconds left on that penalty. Czar goes cross ice. Hawkinson for checking for South Carolina. Saucer pass over to Czar. Back up the other way. Intercepted almost by Alex Siegfried. Tyler Oakley chips that one back in. It's taken all the way back. Deacon Broda in behind the goaltender Winkoff. 20 seconds left 
And Colin Burke already on his feet in the penalty box. Ormley decides to freeze this one. So with 12.07 to go in the third period, 8-1 the score. 39-9 the shots in favor of the club from the state of South Carolina. And another shorthanded opportunity for South Carolina. This one coming off Ian Powderly, who's had a five-on-five -five goal tonight, a power play goal, and nearly completed his hat trick with a shorthanded one there. A couple opportunities out in front, but good save by Weinkoff, shutting that one down. A shot pinballs around in front. Hunter Jackal finally able to come over and gain control. He sends it out on the backhand. It's knocked down in front of the blue line. Now Colin Burke back out on the ice. He closed the penalty box door himself. How courteous. Puck pops up and right over the noggin there of Rob Lawrence. It's one of the stanchions. And another face off here. Lawrence, one of the healthy scratches. And typically the healthy scratches actually don't sit on the bench. I'm a little surprised. But that is where Lawrence finds himself. I guess uh, I'm not entirely sure of, of that particular rule, and I do apologize for that, how many coaches or, or how much personnel you're allowed behind the bench. Right now, as it stands, as Julian Reese brings this one down the left wing and lowers the shoulder, sends one in front for Peters. Winkoff makes a nice glove save. Right now, as it stands, on the bench for South Carolina, the coaches, Alan Sirwa and John Coquelinberg, Charlie Miller taking some photographs right now, Alan Gordon, the equipment manager, and Rob Lawrence. What a save by Winkoff, though. Yeah, shutting down Peters. Robbed him of his sixth goal of the season. Beautiful shot from right out in front. And Winkoff gets the glove out and makes it with his glove. And that even brought some, uh, some stick taps from the South Carolina bench. That glove saved by Winkoff. Point shot. Another save kicked out by the Tennessee goaltender. Out of the far side corner. They ricochet this one around. Bolger in front. Reese hesitates. Puts one up. A big save by Winkoff again. Two outstanding glove saves. Denies Julian Reese of the club record. Reese stays on the ice. The puck chipped back in. King goes D to D and now right back out. Intercepted though by Bolger. Down the right side, he's got some speed. Centers one, Peters in the slot, fires one wide there. Bolger can't tuck it home on the side of the cage. Winkoff diving back, the puck's still loose. Battling fourth there, Julian Reese taken down. King goes down, hits his head off the ice. There will be a call. And they will call Julian Reese for a trip. That one seemed to come out of a, of a scramble there. Both players going down at different times. Julian Reese has been booked for a tripping minor, so the Gamecocks will be shorthanded. And Baylor Winkoff coming up big again. Some more opportunities shut down out in front. And then a scramble. That puck was loose. Winkoff couldn't ice it. And moving around the back, a bunch of bodies fighting for that puck, and somehow Reese's stick was extended, sends Drew King down to the ice and Tennessee will be on the power play. Another defensive zone draw here for South Carolina. Noah Maddy on that one. He won nearly 70% of his faceoffs, and now a shot tip from the point goes in. Gormley never saw it. And so it is eight to two, a power play goal for Tennessee. Yep. It's going to be a long shot with 10.49 remaining for Tennessee to close the gap, but this does go back to margin of victory, which is one of the factors used to control the rankings in the ACHA. So South Carolina can't fall asleep in this third period, can't set cruise control, up six goals now, an awkward deflection out in front, and Liam Gormley couldn't do anything about that one as it goes in to make this one 8-2. to two. Ian Tulk, the goal scorer, in a power play goal for Tennessee. And the first goal scored by someone in a Tennessee sweater not named Drew King. So Nick Peters steps in at center here. He's got Owen Thomas on his right, Cam Mecca to his left. And now Czar at center ice. Motors on. Trying to get some more here for Tennessee. Avery Pruden shutting that one down as best he can. And now Owen Thomas back the other way. Crosses pass with Cam Mecca. Mecca by himself. Goes to the goal. Another big save. Baylor Winkoff shutting down Cam Mecca for the third or fourth time tonight. An outstanding opportunity for the Gamecock captain. He just can't beat the goaltender. Now they come four men strong. Thomas in the slot. He's got Peters. Drops it off. Now Mecca in front. And that one popped up over the goal into the netting in a faceoff. And South Carolina have double-digit goals right now if it isn't for Baylor Winkoff and Net. Came in to start the second period. 
and has made a couple of big saves for the Ice Vols so far. And it looks like we're going to have a goalie change and an applause as he leaves the ice. Yeah, that will be the night for Baylor Winkoff. He's played outstanding. And so I stand corrected. I said uh, we did not expect James Maples to make an appearance tonight, or this afternoon, rather. I'm going to keep doing that for the remaining 10.07 of this hockey game. And so James Maples steps in. Brendan Shaw started the second South Carolina Tennessee game a few months ago. Was pulled and James Maples came in relief of him. Played pretty well though and now here's down the left side Cam Mecca again. Gets another opportunity, a shot off the outside of the goal. Tries the backhand, the rebound in front. It goes around far side where it's taken by Max Galpin. Goes across, gets an inside step there on Cam Mecca. Roaring on through center was Drew King. They gotta wait for him to touch it up. And now back he comes on sides. King fires one that one. Blocked off a stick. It goes wide and played off the goal stick of Liam Gormley. Pops back out. Far side boards Mike Bolger. Chips that one past a man. Bolger gets on his horse. Can't quite get after it, though. And that puck played in past Hunter Jackal. He's going to have to retreat back to his defensive area. And shoveled out end over end. The puck rolls Drew King. Sliding down blocking was Hunter Jackal. He's going to send that shot high and wide. Looking for another goal against Tennessee. Perhaps this one will be registered in the log books. Parker West steers that puck clear of Sean Nolan. It rolls around for Mike Bolger again. Four points last night. Has an assist tonight on the Julian, uh, this afternoon on the Julian Reese goal. Out off the boards, Parker West is without a stick. Centering pass closed off there. Follow up chance in the slot. Still a backhand shot. Loose in front. Big save by Gormley. First time Gormley's had to really go for a swim in this one. And he comes up with a puck. Two big saves by the Gamecock goaltender. That was a great save by Liam Gormley, and it was really close to goalie interference. Sean Nolan fell down in the crease and was blocking off half the goal. Liam Gormley couldn't get over. Finally, when he gets up, he gets that pad over and makes a great pad save. Liam Gormley keeping this goal deficit at six. Gamecock's able to win the defensive zone draw. Tyler Oakley and Avery Pruden back together now. They did not start the game that way. Oakley started out with Parker West. Prudent with Parker West, my apologies. Oakley was with Nick Peters, though. The lines have been uh, put on shuffle for right now. Again, haven't seen Ronan Egan in a hit right there into Tyler Oakley. He goes into the Tennessee bench. Game has kind of calmed down on the physical front, although that could change sometime soon. Oakley walks the blue line, fires that one. Off, we'll say the elbow there of Pete Bunch. Approximately that area out of play. Inside eight minutes to go in the third period. Final period here for the South Carolina from Nashville. And as Zach said, not the last game of the tournament though. Yeah, a couple of games coming up. The one following this one is FAU and Georgia Tech. We won't be here for that. But if you want, you can follow the rest of the tournament through the SEC Hockey Tournament Twitter account. And Penalty Box Radio will have all the coverage. I believe they've got a live broadcast of this game. I'm not 100% sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. This is, again, a consolation game, and Gormley kicks that puck aside. Corey Hawkinson has it himself. Hawkinson skating in alone, gets knocked off the puck, still goes in after it, though. Taken to the boards there by Galpin. Inside, seven and a half. The Volunteers chip this one back out. It rolls in on Colin Burke. Recontrols it now. Delayed off sides. The Volunteers have to touch up. Burke got a little lucky on that one. They play this one out too far for Michael Peake. Slapped back in by Blake Sledge. Turned over, though. Colin Burke has it. Through center, out on the far side. Noah Maddy fresh on the ice for the Gamecocks. Almost too many men on the ice for South Carolina as they finally retreat back to the bench. Ian Powderly on the ice. Two goals already. Gormley hesitates to play that puck. They'll see it come around now for Colin Burke. Out on the backhand. Glove back down, though. Volunteers hold it in. Turned over, and now it's Noah Matty. That'll send almost Ian Powderly. Counterattacking again. Czar fires that one up off the glove of Gormley. He got just a piece of it, but a piece was all he needed. Now it's Powderly down the right side. With Lazine breaking, Powderly has to pull up. Lost the puck. It's flipped back out off Noah Matty. Played underneath for Lazine. Near side corner. Chad Lazine's off as and Matty fires one up and over. 
On the rebound, Powderly can't tuck that one home. Chad Lazine going for a hit. Max Galpin back the other way for University of Tennessee. Goes wide on Hunter Jackal. Centers one almost there. Ended up going in behind the goal. Chad Lazine on the far side. Now Noah Maddy chips this one free. Intended for Ian Powderly, just a few strides away from him, though. As Galpin goes back in against Hunter Jackal. Jackal, another one of those players that we talked about how things shaped up in tryouts. He was a standout on defense. And we kind of had to work his way through the practice squad a little bit, but he's on the team now. Making a considerable amount of starts. His back again comes Drew King, trying to do it all himself. Turned over, and now Owen Thomas, a nice move to step by Drew King in that corner. Calling for a penalty there. It was Michael Garcia, he won't get one. And now Owen Thomas in the near side corner with some speed. Cam Mecca joins him. Drew King follows on and pulls that puck out. Now Peters a shot right there, knocked down on its way. Goes to the near side corner. Garcia has it. Tries to chip it in past Pruden. Cam Mecca races back. Steps wide. Now down the left side, cutting back in towards center. Mecca goes down, back to his feet. Makes a nice move on the back end. Steps back out, tries to stuff it home, and he can't do it. You can see it when Mecca gets the puck sometimes. He's got it in his eyes. He's going to take that puck right to the net. Yeah, Cam Mecca, he's been trying to score all day. He has an assist right now in this game, but he has been working that puck to the net. And Ian Powderly, another chance for the hat trick earlier on. Had a puck out in front in an open goal, but it was bouncing around. Couldn't get a clean stick on it, and he is still searching for his third. Got to wonder the uh, frustration level of Mecca. Usually he only needs one or two of those opportunities clean in on goal to tuck one home and he's had a handful of them hasn't been able to convert. So a loose puck flung back out to center. Julian Reese has to avoid the official. Now Tyler Oakley comes in, sends that one low and wide on the stick side. Michael Bolger pulls it up off the boards. Sending one there in towards the slot, knocked down, goes in behind the goal line. Be taken there by Pete Bunch, chipped around in the near side. On the zone exit, and Julian Reese gets sent down by Bunch. Not typically a guy you see go flying. Reese is back up, the puck to the near uh, far side, rather. And fanning on that clearing attempt. Puck rolls up for Bunch, he'll chip it in, past Colin Burke. Gormley out of his cage, has to play it because he sees one of the volunteers coming. Nice heads up play by Gormley. John Clark was coming with a full head of steam, and he was going to beat Colin Burke. And of all of that, the puck flipped back in anyway. Another high sticking penalty comes up. So inside three and a half to go. One of the volunteers goes to the penalty box. It is Tom Mahoney. Yeah, and Julian Reese doing a really good job there of getting that puck out of the offensive zone. Had two or three ice bowls on him, and he managed to churn his legs, kick that puck out past the blue line and eventually drew the high stick from Tom Mahoney. And we'll see what South Carolina will do on the power play, which has been successful this game and the last against Auburn. Forty-two shots to 13 in favor of South Carolina. Ian Powderly on the ice with a chance for a hat trick on this power play. Parker West moves it across now for Chad Lazine. Center point West. Lazine once again, rookie to rookie now, back down for Maddie. Centering pass goes too far. Takes an awkward pop off the boards. Pruden fields it, though, and gets it back over for West now for Chad Lazine. At the hash marks. Top of the circles, West. Fires one low and wide. Noah Maddie on the puck retrieval. Bodied off by Ian Tulk. Held in by Chad Lazine. Spinning away from King. Now West walks in. Takes a shot. Saved by Maples. Puck still loose in front. And Noah Maddie on this one. 40 seconds gone on the South Carolina power play. Maddie from the right side goes over to the left. Parker West hesitates and shoots one that goes wide again. And that one will clear the zone, and that's always a danger when you shoot wide on the power play from that angle. You're going to catch the glass and clear the zone on yourself. Yeah, and Parker West couldn't get it cleanly on his stick there as Tennessee has a shorthanded opportunity. But if he did, he would have had a great one-time opportunity. Josh Main inside a minute on the power play. As we approach two left in regulation. South Carolina on the verge of their first 
SEC tournament win since 2017. Zach and I were still in high school. Far side shot goes off the outside of the cage. Back up top now for Corey Hawkinson. 30 seconds on the power play. Hawkinson has some trouble controlling it. Weaving back. Slithering towards the point. Losing the puck. And Siegfried goes cross ice. Coming down low is Hunter Jackal. Fan on the one-time shot. Played back by Alex Siegfried. And now underneath. Siegfried controls once again. Only a handful of games left there for the senior out of South Carolina. Now turning shot. Peak scores. Power play goal for Michael Peak, his second of the hockey game. First multi-goal game as a game cut. That'll make it 9-2 to two with two seconds left on that power play. Yeah, Siegfried gets on the score sheet, and Michael Peak finishes for his second of the game. Good work there. Patience holding that puck, then backhanding it five hole through the legs of James Maples, who we talked about earlier, had the game, played that full game yesterday against the number one seed Arkansas had 44 saves but still managed to put in 15 goals behind him that just goes to show the power of that number one seed Arkansas who will play later today so the Gamecocks might not get to double digits though here comes Chad Lazine we'll see if he proves me wrong and Maples narrowly misses being the only of the three Tennessee goaltenders not to surrender a goal Gamecocks put six past Brendan Shaw, a pair past Baylor Winkoff, who had a stellar performance for the most part. There's now a stoppage and penalties being called here with 56.7 to go. Powderly with Czar having a conversation. And Powderly will go to the box, so his hat trick bid comes to an end. Josh Main goes as well. So we will skate four on four for the remainder here, and uh, what a fitting way for a strange tournament to end, uh, a little strangely. Yeah, 56 seconds remaining, and they call a penalty to bring it to four on four. It's gonna be offsetting minors as Tennessee takes over. They'll have one more chance here. Pete Bunch lowers the shoulder, a blocker saved by Gormley. The Volunteers will try for one more. Gormley makes another save, he sticks it into the Near side boards, and Noah maddie has got it. Roaring down the right wing. He's on with Chad Lazine. Goes wide, gets spun out. zar has got his hands up. No one wants a penalty. Maybe both of them want a penalty. Noah Maddie a little shaken up. He's slow back to his feet. Noah Maddie's in some discomfort here. 24 to go. Stoberski has it. Maddie's going to try to labor back to the South Carolina bench. Now King in front of shot. He scores. <laughs> Drew King, 9-3. Drew King scored earlier today. Stepping in there, working his way out in front of Liam Gormley and Noah Maddie, who was shaken up at the end of that play as he was in that far corner. He couldn't get back in time, leaving an open space for Drew King to walk in. Good shot by him. And you got to hope Maddie's okay to take an injury with less than a minute left in the last game of this SEC tournament for South Carolina. Yeah, and uh, what, what did we talk about in the intermission, right, right before the start of this period? Was, uh, one of the only things that can really happen is uh, players get hurt. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on Noah Matty, keep an eye on all the other injuries, and time expires for South Carolina, so does the SEC tournament. Much different than perhaps many expected. So the Gamecocks win their consolation game. It is the first game they have won here in Nashville. Again, since 2017. So, a silver lining here at, uh, at the end of the road in Nashville for South Carolina. Yeah, it's good to pick up that first win and go home with something to show. Um, but that first round exit or the, is uh, not what they want. Auburn put on one heck of a show in that first round. And those last three SEC tournaments for South Carolina have ended in misery with last-second goals. We... We saw last year Florida, South Carolina climbing out of a seven-goal deficit, coming all the way back. Crazy game, ended up losing that one in the year before that, losing to Ole Miss right off a of face-off. Braden Storner, he's actually their leading scorer this year, so you might hear that name once you mosey on over to Penalty Box Radio, but uh, that'll just about wrap it up for us here from Nashville. We appreciate 
all of you that came along for the ride. We look forward to seeing you again next weekend as the Gamecocks return home to take on the Chanticleers of Coastal Carolina. But for right now, the final score, USC 9, University of Tennessee 2. The tournament ends for both those teams and for all of us here at the Capital City Sports Network. For Zach McKintry, I thank you for joining us. My name is Dylan Clark. Good night, Carolina, and forever to thee.